How you doing? This is just a quick video and we've got two televisions here on the bench. Uh, one is a Samsung from 1983, uh, made for the, U the USA market. And the other is a UK built Toshiba set from 1979. Now if you look at the two sets, same, same size and what have you, but you'll notice that uh, there's one difference, major difference. The Samsung on the left has uh, mechanical tuners, whereas the Toshiba on the right has a, a Verdicap preset tuner. So how come when you look at all older programs from the USA that all their televisions have, or most of them, in the 70s, 80s, even early 90s, have uh, mechanical tuners. Whereas colour televisions in Europe, except for one or two notable very early ones, such as the Baird 700, uh, always had preset mechanical tuners with, say, four or six or maybe seven or eight buttons. Well, the reason is that, unlike America, most uh, European countries only had one or two national broadcasters. Well, one national broadcaster with one or two TV stations. So Ireland, for example, only had one national broadcaster. Uh, one national broadcaster with one TV station, which was Telefisheren. And then they got a second uh, television station, uh, I think it was in the early 80s, late 70s, early 80s. RTE2 started. So we had two television stations, and if you're lucky enough to live on near the border of Northern Ireland or along the East Coast, you could pick up the English broadcasters. So, so you would be able to get BBC One, BBC Two, ITV, and then in the eighties, Channel Four as well. So the most presets that you needed were six. Uh, the most channels were available and the same thing in Europe uh, Holland had three stations and then if they were on the border with Belgium they could get a, a you know broadcaster from there and France the same they're all the same they only had two or three stations but the story was different in America because they had commercial broadcasting so they had an awful lot of stations and it would be very hard to make uh, a television with a mechanical preset tuner would say a hundred buttons down the side of the set and the technology wasn't available at the time for IC memory to do say 80 or 100 uh, presets uh, channel presets so the easiest thing to do was to have a mechanical tuner so that's why American set kept the me mechanical tuners much longer and you can see here you have the VHF tuner on top and the UHF one on the bottom and it's detented and you can see the channels are marked on it so it's quite easy and then you have the fine tuning there such as so that is why American televisions look far more interesting with their mechanical tuners just on a side note, you might ask, why is there an American television in Ireland? Well, this set belonged to someone who had relatives living in New York. And of course, before Skype and telephone calls were ridiculously expensive, and they wanted to see uh, family events or what have you, they would record them and post over the tape, the VHS tape. So they had this television with an NTSC VHS player. So they uh, um, run off an auto transformer for 110 volts. So they could see what was going on in the States. And the relations in the States had a small European portable television with the same setup with a step up transformer for 220 volts. So that's interesting. And I have two American televisions. I have another one as well, a Portland branded one, which I think was made by Samsung as well. And it's a 20 inch and that was for over here for the same reason as well so both of these American televisions that I have in the collection have had very little use but this one was left in a shed for a few years and obviously such a thing is redundant now because Skype, FaceTime and 
WhatsApp video calls and what have you. Stuff's not needed anymore. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. I hope that was a little bit informative. And uh, I hope to see you all soon again. And thanks for watching. Bye-bye.